Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents. Seriously, bro. Boom, she explodes. Do I love science? Yes, I do. But science is not perfect, and it had a big hand in the Spanish Inquisition. Plus, it worked side by side with major oil companies for 120 years, and then it turned around and blamed us for climate change. So, it's a weird relationship. Anyway, can I get the article where I gotta click? It's official. NASA's impossible EM drive has been peer reviewed and published. Oh, that's fantastic. It's kind of stupid looking. No, oh, man. <laughs> like a giant iron drum. All right. It's weird because it's like either we're stuck on. 1950s Atlas V rockets, which is strange. But then, you know, not replacing the Hubble for 25 years is really strange also. Not going back to the moon, super duper strange, man. Anyway, so it's like, are we really stuck on petroleum engines in 1955 rockets? Or do we have M drives, warp drives, Goldman Sachs, jump room star chambers, anti-gravity machines, ion engines? I don't know, man. Starting to think like 85% of everything we know is a total lie. That's why I used to talk about boobies all the time. Is it A, I can verify that boobies are magic, they're wonderful, and they're like one of the greatest painkillers known to man. It's Saturday. If this ain't your cup of tea, then go find another beverage somewhere else, buddy. Everything started with British scientist Roger Shaywer, who presented his M-Drive microwave thruster. M-Drive microwave thruster. Holy crap. It's like you can get to Mars in five minutes and have a heated burrito when you get there. That is fantastic. As an alternative to powering spacecraft without propellant. A very powerful and efficient method. Instead of fuel, it uses microwaves bouncing off a carefully tuned set of reflectors to achieve small amounts of force and therefore achieve propellant-free thrust. <sighs> I got your propellant-free thrust right here. Just need the proper launching pad. Designs for a device called a microwave thruster were first proposed in 2006. It created quite the stir around it. And while this device was physically sound and followed the principles of relativity, it was dismissed by researchers who claimed that such a functioning device would be shoved in the vault and locked away so we would be forced to pay $2 per gallon of gas for the next 40 years so we could have perpetual war in third world countries, eventually having it come home in a totally divided and conquered society where people's rights were stripped from them. Hey, wait a second. That's not what the article says. What the hell just happened? Let me try and read that again. It was dismissed by researchers who claimed that such a functioning device would defy the law of conservation of momentum. This claim was quite simple. If you want to propel a shuttle forward, you have to push something else backwards. So how could this propeller work without pushing anything away? Well, NASA wanted to see if it works. So they built one. And much to the surprise, surprise, surprise of some physicists, it worked. Furthermore, NASA isn't the only one building an M-Drive. In 2008, Chinese researchers confirmed that they are building the impossible space drive. Dun, 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 dun. Hoping to revolutionize space travel for robots, not humans. Because if there's one thing that right now NASA's all about, it's about putting robots all around the solar system. And then talking about, yeah, maybe possibly going to Mars, you know, 30, 40, 50 years. That's hilarious. You know what I'm saying? Like, really, who buys that? Like, oh my God. They're like, okay, we're going to replace the Hubble in 25, 30 years. We're going to go to Mars in like 25, 30 years. We're going to do a bunch of cool shit way, way, way in the future, man. Here's more pictures of Mars dirt. And there's water on Mars. We just don't have any of those pictures. Because uh, none of our 52 satellites, rovers, orbiters, spider drones, gray goo boxes, black cubes filled with black magic blood of saints. None of those things are near the water area because we're fascinated by Mars dirt. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, if you if you if you if you, you kind of look into the space agencies, the whole situation is really, really, really weird. At times, I think that we're being invaded by Mars slowly, and they're heating our planet to make it more comfortable for them. And they're gonna kill us all, humans, anyway. I mean, no, that's a wacky theory. Even though it feels like the divide and conquer thing is really anti-human and hates humans, that would just be science fiction, right? Okay, maybe I've said too much. But some people still weren't convinced. Some researchers argued that there might be something we're missing. That's what I was just saying. Some kind of error in understanding how this drive works. I was talking about something else, though. So, of course, NASA said it will take its project into outer space, free from any earthly interference. But in the meantime, it had another thing to do. Have its Martian rovers take selfies of themselves, leaving people to wonder, where's its arm? And then NASA replies, oh, we photoshopped the arm out. And then we're like, ha, ah, you admitted you photoshopped your photographs. Good job, buddies. But we are NASA, so remember when you're kicking them in the balls, you're really kicking yourself in the balls. NASA then wanted to confirm its results, so they sent out their experiments for peer review and publishing. In peer review, high-qualified individuals review the paper and identify any potential error or lack of accuracy. Yeah, if there's one thing the hive mind is good at, is standing up going, hell no, this is bullshit, there's an error here. Well, again, the M drive passed with flying colors. Who would have guessed that? No one could find a flaw in the experiment. Who would have guessed that? Hive mind says, what? What? 
What, what? I'm going to pop some tags. A new peer-reviewed paper is called Measurement of Impulse Thrust for a Closed Radio Frequency Cavity in Vacuum and has been published online as an open access article in advance in the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, AIAA, Journal of Propulsion and Power. It's set for a print publishing in December. Thrust measurements were made using the low thrust torsion pendulum at NASA's Johnson Space Center. The torsion pendulum is capable of measuring thrust down to the single digit micronewton level. Wow. The paper reads, thrust data from forward, reverse, and null suggested that the system was consistently performing at 1.2 gigawatts, which is very close to the average impulse performance measured in air. What? Can someone explain that to me in the comments? Thank you. Number of error sources were considered and discussed, but that's not super impressive. That is not what she said. When you consider that the super powerful hull thruster generates force of 60 millinewtons per kilowatt. Oh my god, I think I just fell asleep. But this is a proof of concept more than a functional device. Yeah, it's like dark matter or gravity. Complicated physics, possible results. <sighs> Alright, I guess that'll be part two. Did we learn anything? Hell yeah. It's Saturday. God bless everybody. It might be Sunday now. Whatever. I love you guys. Peace out. Talk to you soon. Captain Happy Comet Ice and Cupcakes, baby. Space underwear in your face. All right, thanks. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents. Seriously, bro. Boom, she explodes. Do I love science? Yes, I do. But science is not perfect, and it had a big hand in the Spanish Inquisition. Plus, it worked side by side with major oil companies for 120 years, and then it turned around and blamed us for climate change. So, it's a weird relationship. Anyway, can I get the article? What I gotta click? It's official. NASA's impossible EM drive has been peer-reviewed and published. Oh, that's fantastic. It's kind of stupid looking. No, man. <laughs> like a giant iron drum. All right. It's weird because it's like, either we're stuck on... 1950s Atlas V rockets, which is strange. But then, you know, not replacing the Hubble for 25 years is really strange also. Not going back to the moon, super duper strange, man. Anyway, so it's like, are we really stuck on 